This is Ignacio Ruiz. This is the second part of the session that we are having on the fundamentals of approximation theory and of the Chebyshev framework. So where do we leave it in the first part? We left it at seeing how when we are trying to, with the example of the Runge function, when we are trying to approximate the function, if we use the Chebyshev points, some sort of magic happens that the approximation gets extremely good. So everything has been the same. So let's now see what is the what is the reason behind this magic. Obviously there is no magic, there is a reason behind it. Let's 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 look into it now. Now uh, let me get this. Yep. Now so if we have a function f, let's consider the following. First of all let's define the Chebyshev polynomials. We have t0 of the first Chebyshev polynomial is 1 t1 is x and then we have the following rule tj plus 1 of x equals 2x tj of x minus tj plus 1 okay that's how we can define them now i have prepared here the wikipedia page of them so that you can have a quick look at how they how they are yeah, it is. Yeah, these are the Chebyshev polynomials. Here you can see, look, this is the definition that I just gave, I've just given you. And now here you have a look at, just to get an idea of an intuition of how they, how they are. So as you can see, the T0 is a straight line here as a horizontal line. T1 is this uh, straight line here. Then T2 is going to be this green, this green line. T3 is the orange line. T4. Is this other line here? Okay, so that's how we have. As you can see, they go from minus one and one. I mean, that's how they usually they we use them, from minus one and one. And also in the the values, also you can see here in the screen that they go from minus one and one. Okay. Now, we saw before the Chebyshev points, those red dots in the in the in the plot that I had, which are the projections of the equidistant points in the complex plane. Well, those red dots are the zeros of the Chebyshev of the Chebyshev. Uh, of the Chebyshev polynomials, right? This. So now, once we have that, let's let's uh, let's define the following mathematical objects. We have a function f of x. Okay. Let's define the Chebyshev expansion as the sum from k equals zero to n, sorry, to infinity, to infinity of a k t k of x, where a k is given by 2 over pi of the interval between minus 1 and 1 of f x t k of x divided by the 1 minus x square. This is the, the measure dx. Okay? So the, this is the Chebyshev expansion, which I'm going to put here already at f x equal to because we're going to see in a minute in the theorem that they are they are they converge anyway. So we have this is the Chebyshev expansion. Then we have the truncated Chebyshev expansion f n of x equals the same thing, but instead of to infinity to a number n. And finally we have this thing p n of x. Let me write it down what it is and I'll. And I'll explain in a second. From k zero to n of c k t k of x. Now, this is the following. When we have, we know that when we have n plus one points, there is only one polynomial of degree n that goes through the through those n points, n plus one points. That polynomial is p n. And what we're doing here is expressing that polynomial in the base. Or the Chebyshev polynomial, right? That gives us some coefficients c, which obviously, in principle, c and a are going to be different. That is, these two things are, are different. However, we're going to see in a minute how, in practice, it is. In practice, it's as if they are the same thing, right? So this is what we have here. We have a function. We have the Chebyshev polynomials. We have the expansion, uh, on the Chebyshev expansion of the function. We have the truncated Chebyshev expansion. 
and we have the Chebyshev interplanet. Now, so theorem one. Let's f be a Lipschitz continuous function in minus one one. Two remarks here. First of all, what is Lipschitz continuous? Uh, Lipschitz continuous. It is a, Lipschitz continuity is a very weak. It's quite a weak uh, uh, condition on continuity. Also, the interval minus one one. Obviously, functions live in other intervals. In generic, uh, generically, in the interval between a and b, any interval a and b can be linearly transported to minus one and one, and vice versa. So, anything that we say here between for the interval minus one and one can be extended to any interval a and b, right? So, having said that, let f be a Lipschitz continuous function on minus one one. Then it has a unique representation of a Chebyshev series which is absolutely and uniformly convergent. That is, this, what I said before, this equal is correct. So this, uh, this, this term here, as n goes to infinity, converges to f. That's what we're saying here. That's where you have the, oops, yeah, the demonstration in 2003. And then that's what we're saying here, that uh, these two, f, uh, uh, that f and fn, basically f, f and fn, there is a, for any epsilon, there is an n after which the error is going to be smaller than epsilon. Okay, that's absolutely common. So now, theorem two, and this is where things get starting to get interesting. Let f be a continuous function in minus one and one. Let x zero to x n be the first n plus one Chebyshev points on minus one and one, and let v zero to v n be the values of f on x zero to x n. Now. By applying the fast Fourier transform to on the v's, we can obtain an expression of the Chebyshev interplanet in n log n operations. This is very important. Let me explain to you why. Because what we're saying here is that these CKs we can calibrate them very easily within n log n operations. It's really really easy from a computational point of view. That is important. Why? Because the AKs are quite difficult to compute. Doing this integral is not with any level of of relevant precision, it is it is uh, it's quite difficult from a computational point of view. However, we're saying that the C's are very easy to compute, and if f is Lipschitz continuous, then the Chebyshev interpolant converges to f at the same rate as the Chebyshev series. This is really interesting now. What we're saying here is that these two goes to f together. So they are not that different after all, which is what I kind of suggested before. So we have here something like we have the spectral decomposition of the function f on the polynomials of the Chebyshev polynomials here. We have the interpolant on the Chebyshev points, which are the zeros of the polynomial of the Chebyshev polynomials. And the A's are difficult to calibrate, but the C's are D are easy to calibrate. And we know that these two guys converge together to f. So this is great news. This means that if we solve this, we have solved the spectral decomposition challenge. Now the demonstration, there you have it. And now theorem three, and this is where things get really interesting now. Let f be an analytical function on a compact domain in Rd. By the way, this, uh, this, this theorem that you can see in the screen is for any dimension d, but we are going to dedicate a video in the future for high dimensionality. For now, let's, let, let's restrict ourselves to one dimension. So let f be an analytical function of the compact domain in R. Suppose it has a bounded analytical continuation to a bursting ellipse in C, so that it can be extended. Then, the Chebyshev interplant of degree n converges exponentially fast to the function f as n goes to infinity. That is, that with very few points, what we saw before, with very few points, we're going to be able to replicate the function with extreme accuracy. And this is very interesting because this works as long as this f is analytical. We don't need any other information. If it's a f is analytical, this is mathematical guaranteed. This is extraordinary. Why? Because most of the functions that we have in the real world, definitely in the financial markets, are analytical or piecewise analytical, which means that we can use this and we can replicate any pricing function with very few points using this framework, right? 
By the way, when we go to high dimensionality, just as a remark, this convergence is uh, extremely speaking is sub exponential. So it's also is I mean it's not extremely exponential, it's sub exponential, but in any case it's really fast. We'll discuss this in the in the future videos. So we have this framework by which we have the spectral decomposition of the function f into the series of polynomials. A's are difficult to calibrate, but the C's are easy to calibrate, which are the coefficients of the interpolant. And these two guys converge together to f, and they do it exponentially. This is perfect framework. So let's put this into practice. Let's look at some examples of how this works. Again, let me go back to my Linux environment here. There you go. Now, so what we do have here, we have here again is the Ranker function that we saw before. Here is where I define my, my function up here. And then we are going to, now we're going to use, for example, uh, approximate this function between minus one and one. And in this case, if you remember in the previous video, where when I was playing with the Ranker function, R was uh, increasing n manually. Okay, we're going, to do that, we're going to do that now automatically, up to, in this case, 300. So let's run this. And what do we have here? We have here a, a function. Uh, in, in red, we have the D function, okay, the function that we are uh, working with. And in the, the graph at the bottom, what do we have? We have, in the horizontal line, we have N. So we are increasing N, we're seeing how things behave. In the vertical axis, we have the maximum error in the interval minus one and one. We are computing, in this case, 1,000 points. We are, we, are, we are computing the value of the function and the, and the PN or FN in 1,000 points and then we are calculating the error. We are seeing that, uh, actually, we are computing precisely Pn, okay? So, uh, and the error, and we are showing this in log scale because otherwise, given that things converge exponentially in the Chebyshev uh, framework, otherwise we wouldn't see anything. And what do we see here? We see here four lines. The turquoise line, it is the, it is the error that we would get, that we get, and when we use polynomial interpolation on equidistant points, the dark green line, it is the error when we use linear interpolation in equidistant points. The, the, the light green, it is the, the error when we use a spline, cubic spline interpolation in equidistant points. And finally, the blue line is the Chebyshev framework. So the first thing that we say is that, as, as we have seen in the, in the maths, in the, in the, in the, in the theorems, the Chebyshev framework converges exponentially. It's a straight line down to machine precision. At that point, it cannot get any better. And of course, the, 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 the whole computation is, uh, gets stuck there because it cannot get better than, than machine precision. Now, what do we see as well? The turquoise line, uh, it is all over the place, as we saw before in the, in the previous video. And the both green lines, the, the linear and cubic spine interpolation, we see a phenomenon that we see everywhere all the time, which is there is a point in which it doesn't matter how much, how many more points we give to the to the inter, to the interpolator or to the approximator, it cannot get any better. Uh, the reason for, it hardly gets any better, and as a result, the line flattens out, which is as you can see. We see that all the time with linear interpolation, with splines, cubic splines, all this type of more standard interpolation techniques. Now let's look into the next function that we have here. It is the exponential function. And in this case, let's use 50 points. Again, we have the function here. And you can see how the, the green lines, as, as I said before, they flatten out. There is a point in which they cannot get any better. The turquoise line, which is the, the polynomial interpolation on equidistant points, it explodes. The reason for this explosion, it is has to do with the evaluation of polynomials, that is, uh, we are going to dedicate again a video to the evaluation of, of these type of things. Uh, I don't want to do it now, otherwise it would be too long. Uh, this video would be too long. But uh, but evaluation of polynomials can be quite tricky. However, when we go to the Chebyshev uh, framework, as you can see, it converges exponentially down to, to machine precision. And in this case, we don't have any evaluation problems because in order to evaluate these guys, particularly this guy, uh, we use uh, we use uh, some special algorithms to make it uh, more more efficient. That we'll see in the in the video about that. Right. So again, you can see how the Chebyshev framework it is orders of magnitude better than any other thing. 
Now let's look into the sign. And this, in order to get a few oscillations, let's go between, let's, let's do it between minus 10 and 10. And let's use 80 points, for example. All right, here you have the function. And again, you can see how the linear and spline interpolation, they flatten out, they don't do a very good job. The, this, the polynomial on equidistant point again explodes. And in spite of all the polynomials that the other ones have, the Chebyshev interpolation rockets down and it stays down there at 10, uh, at 10 to the minus 15 uh, at machine precision. Again, this is another illustration of the theorems that we have seen before. We have guaranteed exponential convergence. Now let's do another one. In this case, quite a funky function. It is e to the of the sine of x to the three. Let's do that. In this case, I'm going to do this between minus two and two and 150 points. Okay, so there you go. You have the function. It's quite a quite a funky function, as you can see. It goes up and down at different oscillations, and then it stays in the middle, uh, stays near horizontal in, in the center. So it's quite a interesting function. And in spite of all these wobbliness and going up and down, as as expected. Uh, linear and spline interpolation do a pretty bad job with this flattening that I told you about, even with this very, very strange kink in the spline thing, for example. Also, the polynomial interpolation on equidistant points all over the place. And in spite of all the difficulties of the function, when we have, when we use Chebyshev, straight line down to um, machine precision. So again, it shows how powerful this, this framework is. And now let's do a last one, a last uh, function, which is from the functional point of view is really easy for Chebyshev, but given that it is something quite relevant to many of us, Black-Scholes, as an example of a actual uh, pricing function, uh, we're going to do this between 50 and 150 because the strike is at 100 and all we need is 50, up to 50 points. Oh, something has happened. Ah, oh, yes, this minus. Plus. Let's do it again. There you go. So we have the function there that we know very well, the black scholes function called the call option. And then again, you can see how the uh, linear and spline, they do a pretty, uh, 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 I mean, they flatten out and they do a, a not a very good job. The spline, the, 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 the um, polynomial on equidistant points, again, it explodes. And as, I, uh, as the theorems uh, indicate, the Chebyshev framework, it is a straight line, uh, a straight line down to uh, machine precision with only 30 points. So you can see here how this is, uh, with these examples, what I wanted to illustrate is basically the power of Chebyshev. The Chebyshev is not just the theory. It can be applied to lots of functions and to lots of, uh, uh, of contexts, and that, uh, and that it can be quite uh, remarkable how it is used. How, how, when you use it correctly, what you can get out of it. That's what I mean. So now the question is, okay, what is the magic of these Chebyshev points? Why is, are these Chebyshev points so, so special? Because it looks like when we have, when we try to, when we develop this theory and we use the, the information of the function on the Chebyshev points, some magic happens and the, and the approximator converges extremely fast. And that is for any function, as long as it's analytical. So it is something extraordinary. What is going on here? And the reason why this happens is the following. Going into great detail is, is beyond the, the scope of this video. It would be, again, it would be, the video would be too long. But to give you an idea, it is that when we compute the error between Pn and F, this error can be expressed as a integral in the complex plane and that integral is dominated one, one term. Now, this term depends only on the geometry on the distribution of the points from which we have the information of the function. Now, we have here a Chebyshev framework that is, that is given also by a, with a measure. That measure can define a potential. And now I'm going to put my heart as a, as a physicist. 
we go to potential theory. Potential theory, when we have charges in a potential, that creates an energy. If you look at the math, this can be interpreted from a, as a physicist. I interpret it as a, a system in which you have a potential given by this measure. And the points in which you call the function, which are the Chebyshev point, well, or any points, in principle, any points. It can be equally spaced points or any points between A and B. Those points are charges that live in the potential. When you have that, when you have actually a system with some energy, the charges and the potential, they interact, and you have some energy. Now, when you do the maths, you see that if you try to compute the state of equilibrium of the system, that is the state of minimum energy of that system of, of charges, that state is the one in which the, the charges stay on the Chebyshev points. So it looks like from all the distribution, all the different geometries of the points, the one that minimizes the energy is the one, is the distribution that is precisely the zeros of these polynomials, which are the Chebyshev points. That, so, and that is related to the error term, because the error term, because of that reason that I've given you, that error term, when, when, you, when you use the information on the Chebyshev points, that error term gets minimized. And in the Chebyshev framework, that error converges exponentially because that is how that 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 uh, that term behaves exponentially converges with n so that is the the the, the theory the, behind it it has to do with potential theory and minimizing the energy of the system so what do we have here we have seen here a number of approximation frameworks Chebyshev spectral composition linear interpolation spline in particular cubic spline polynomial interpolation on generic points, on equidistant points, and then we have discussed as well regression and very briefly machine learning techniques. In this video, we have dealt with the first line of the table that you see in the screen, which is from all these frameworks, Chebyshev is the only one that guarantees, has a, that can guarantee fast convergence, but this I mean exponential convergence, which is in practice the best you can hope for in this type of, of, of environment, in this type of mathematical environment. So, I mean, to me, there is no doubt that uh, if you are into approximating a function, this is, I mean, the, the first candidate to use is Chebyshev, because uh, basically I don't see any reason why not to do it. It is the, the one that converges best and is mathematically guaranteed. So, what, uh, what do we have so far? We have seen that, first of all, polynomial interpolation has an unfair bad reputation. We've seen that in the, in the first uh, part of this session. Secondly, if we interpolate on Chebyshev points, we obtain exponential convergence, mathematically guaranteed. And also, that, well, we haven't seen that in detail, we'll see soon, but we can control the error, the very small error. We can control it uh, ex ante before we launch the calculation. And third, we have hinted that this can be extended to any direction. I say hinted because we haven't seen it in detail. We will see it in the next video, but this can be extended to any dimension. Therefore, what happens if we apply this to a pricing function in a risk engine? We should be able to replicate the pricing function with very few points, with very high accuracy, super efficient evaluation, controlling the error, and the whole framework is mathematically proven. So quite frankly, uh, what else? This is an ideal scenario, isn't it? That's at least my opinion. Okay, so in the next few videos, we're going to talk about more about uh, a number of things that we have hinted in this in this in this session, and I hope that you like the, this uh, this these videos, these last two videos with this uh, session on the and provide an introduction to to to, to Chebyshev theory and to approximation theory, and uh, uh, we would love to hear from you. Please feel free to contact us in the email that you can see in the screen. Uh, we love uh, collaboration framework, so let us know if you have any questions or comments about uh, what we are talking about here. And, uh, and yes, I hope you like this video, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.